Now let's look at these two hypotheses side by side. The null hypothesis states that whatever treatment we applied does not have an effect. That is, sampling error alone is what we measured. The alternative hypothesis says that a treatment we applied does have an effect, so sampling error plus some real effect. Together, these hypotheses are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Mutual exclusivity here means that only one of these hypotheses can be true in the world. Either the treatment does have an effect or it doesn't have an effect. These hypotheses together are also exhaustive. One of these hypotheses is true in the world. It is either the case that the treatment does have an effect or it doesn't have an effect. Notice that by being mutually exclusive and exhaustive, if we can discredit one of these hypotheses, specifically the null hypothesis, we'll have some reason to believe the other explanation, the alternative hypothesis, is a better explanation for what we have observed. For instance, if we flip a coin a hundred times and get a hundred heads, the null hypothesis could be true, but it would be a very unlikely event for us to flip a hundred times and get a hundred heads. The null hypothesis could be true, but it's not a reasonable explanation given what we know about what happens when we flip coins. All of statistical inference is like this. We need to know if our effect is like the 100 heads on 100 coin flips, or if it's like 51 heads on 100 coin flips. In both cases, the null hypothesis could be true, but when we get 100 heads, it doesn't seem reasonable to assume it's true. So far, we've only stated in words the null and alternative hypotheses. These aren't particularly statistical yet. So let's refine these hypotheses for the context we're working in when we're taking that one sample from a population we know a lot about. Starting with the null hypothesis, in that context, we would say that the mean of a population treated with ginseng would be equal to the mean of a population not treated with ginseng. The null hypothesis is true if those two population means would be identical. Any difference between those population means and the null hypothesis is no longer true. Formally, this is called the nil-null, that the difference between these two populations, one treated with ginseng and one not treated with ginseng, would be identical. Now on the other side, the alternative hypothesis makes a very nonspecific claim, but one that the mean of a population treated with ginseng is not equal to the mean of a population treated with ginseng. Now let's pause for a second and observe two important things about our null and alternative hypotheses as we form them right now. The first is that we're talking about effects specifically on the mean of populations. So we're not talking about changing the median, we're not talking about changing the standard deviations of these populations, we're localizing our question to the mean or the center of these populations. Now in most cases that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. The center of everybody in a population is what we're using to characterize some effect. But there will be times when our hypotheses will revolve around things other than population means. For now, just notice that's the thing we're talking about. Second, notice that these hypotheses do not have any sample statistics in them. We're not talking about the sample mean with treatment versus a population without treatment. Specifically, we're talking about populations that have been treated and populations that haven't. But so far, we haven't seen a population that's been treated. We've only had a sample that we've treated. So we need to step back for a second and think about our sampling scenario and what we're really trying to make an inference about. 